So I'm going to be covering the chapter Gift for the Darkness, chapter eight, which is one of the longer chapters. And as we know, they have discovered the beast, which is really a parachutist up on the mountain. And when the wind blows, it moves, making it looking look animated and real. So they run down. Um, and they're having this kind of um, gathering again, try to reassess what's going on. And, and here we're in the chapter and Ralph, I'm sorry, Jack says, what about my hunters? And notice he says it twice here. What about my hunters? And Ralph answers, they're boys armed with sticks. <sighs> this is the igniting thing for Jack. He gets to his feet. He's obviously upset. He goes over, he picks up conch and he blows it to call a meeting because he has something to say. He says, or I've called an assembly, says Jack, because of a lot of things. First, you know now that we've seen the beast, he says. And the next thing is that we couldn't kill it. And here's where he varies off. And the next thing is Ralph says, my hunters are no good. And Ralph thinks you're cowards and you run away from the boar and the beast. And that's not all. He's like Piggy and he says things like Piggy and he isn't a proper chief. So my notation at the top is that, remember, Jack is the id. The id is impulse. The id is um, creativity, sexual energy. It doesn't have barriers. And the id is very jealous because Ralph, the ego, seems to be choosing the superego represented by Piggy and doing what he says. So you're always going to see that jealousy come out of Jack. And boom, there he's like Piggy and he's choosing him. So he's upset. Um, he gives orders and expects people to obey for nothing. So Jack pushes it to the point. And he says, who thinks he shouldn't be chief? And oh, major burn. Nobody raises their hands. Nobody moves anything. And Jack um, <laughs> goes off really in disgrace. So the id revolted, but says he's not going to play anymore because he's not appreciated. And he's humiliated and he leaves. And I want you to think about your own three parts when the id wants something and if it's denied constantly and told that it's ridiculous and you can't do that at a certain point it will run off in humiliation and anger and it's not a good thing um so what do people have they have midlife crisis where suddenly they've been denying their id all their life. You know, they did what their parents wanted to. They went to college. They have the job now and they do what the job wants them to. And they get married and they have kids and they do what they're supposed to. And suddenly at midlife, the id says, you have been choosing the superego all this time. You've been ignoring me. And it gets very angry. And the super, the id comes out in midlife crisis and crazy things happen. The person divorces his wife. I'm using a he just as an example. Gets a younger girlfriend, goes and buys a motorcycle, whatever else. But the id is revolting because it's been ignored and denied. So this book is symbolic of that happening here. Okay, of course, we have... Piggy, the super ego is like, we can do without Jack. We don't need him. I think we could do a lot less of him. Now we get to this very interesting part with Simon, where Simon says, I think we ought to climb the mountain. Oh, so symbolic. P Piggy's like, are you crazy? Simon's like, what else is there to do? This is again, symbolic. The beast is symbolic of our biggest fear. The thing that's keeping us away we're running from it. We're hiding from it. We're thinking about it all the time. And Simon has this wisdom. You have to climb the mountain metaphorically and face the beast because you have no other choice. So again, this book is so symbolic on a psychological level. They have no fire. They're stuck down there. Um, the older boys, this is what... Um, Really, Jack's going to offer them something. For the first time, as they're trying to build this fire down on the platform, Ralph realizes we have very few little, big people, big kids. They've all gone. Where are they? Okay. Um, and of course, the super ego piggy's like, it's awesome. We don't need the id. We can do without them. We're happier. We're going to be happier, won't we? 
All right, so then it segues over to Simon is going back out into his little special place in the forest. And in this chapter, butterflies are mentioned quite a bit. Here's the first instance. The butterflies danced in the middle of the unending dance. Butterflies represent innocence. Watch what happens to innocence. Watch when they appear in this. Okay, so now we go back to Jack and this small group of boys that are coming and oh, look, the id looks brilliantly happy. Why? Because he says, hunting. We're going to hunt and I'm going to be chief. Forget the beast. If Jack was astonished by the fervor, he didn't show it. We, um, they're going to go back to Castle Rock. We're going to kill a pig and we're going to have a feast. And about the beast, when we kill something, we're going to leave a gift for it. Then it won't bother us. This is feeling very native, right? Um, so Jack lures his followers, says we're going to give something to the beast. Okay, so they sneak up on their prey, and it's a sow, which is a female pig, and she's feeding her babies right now. This is a really tough scene for me to read. Uh, very tough. So she's under the trees, her ear flaps idly, and boom, now he attacks this. And all these boys are poking at her. And I want you to think about the sexual innuendo. Now, what innuendo means is hint, where it's not said directly. You have to read through it. It's like on the office, right? That's what she said. All the innuendo, things that sound innocent once they're thought of sexually suddenly have a different meaning. You need to do this for this scene. The wooden spears with fire-hardened points flew toward the chosen pig. The sow gave a gasping squeal, staggered up, two spears sticking in her fat flank after her, breathed fiercely so that they were awed by him being Jack and looked at each other with uneasy admiration. The sow got away with the sting of another spear in her flank, forcing a spear still deeper. She staggered ahead of them, bleeding and mad, and the hunters followed, wedded to her in lust, excited by the long chase and the drop blood. They were just behind her when she staggered into an open place where Bright flowers grew and butterflies danced around each other. Sal fell on the hunters, hurled themselves at her eruption, full of sweat and noise and blood and terror, prodding with his spear. Jack was on top, stabbing downward with his knife. Roger found a lodge point for his lodgement for his point, and he leaned with his whole weight. The sow collapsed under them, and they were heavy and fulfilled upon her. The butterflies still danced, preoccupied in the center of the clearing. The way that this is described is more than just killing a sow. It is a rape. And it's meant to be seen that way and described that way. The id takes what it wants. It doesn't think about it. And rape is not about sex. Rape is about dominance. And I wish we were in class because I always get this discussion. No, it's not. It's about sex. No, it's not. It is about dominating. Think of a male prison. You know what is going on in there. You've heard what's going on in there. And it's not because suddenly they have all decided to be bisexual. It is because it is an act of dominance. And that's what is happening here with this sow. And by the way, the id doesn't think and doesn't plan. Don't you think it's kind of dumb to be killing a mother pig who's nursing the babies? How long can you keep doing that? The id doesn't plan or think that way. Okay. Oh, and just in case you didn't get it, Roger says his spear was right up her ass. Okay, so they decide they're going to have a feast. They're going to raid them for fire. They're going to leave part of the kill for the beast. They sharpen a stick at both ends. They put the head on a, on a stick. The head's for the beast. It's a gift. Now, Simon's very special. He's going to talk to the beast, and the head becomes symbolic. Starts to talk to him. Um, and agreeing with him, and here we go, the butterflies deserted the open space where the obscure, thi obscene thing, which was the pig's head, grinned and dripped. The island was getting worse and worse. Okay. Um, here, Ralph is like, I don't understand these people. Fire is the only thing that's going to save us. If someone threw you a rope or a doctor told you take this or you die, wouldn't you? So the id doesn't want that, though. It doesn't want to be told what to do. Um, okay, here's the universal question of this book. What makes things break up? And that's what this book is answering. Okay, so here's the it offers fun. We're going to hunt and feast and have fun. If you want to join my tribe, come and see us. So there's the lore. Um, okay, 
and they come in there and the conch represents order and the id doesn't want it. So they're not coming there to take the conch, which originally Piggy thought they were going to do, so he protected it. Okay, fire is a call to the civilized world and the id doesn't want civilization. The fire is the most important thing on the island, according to Ralph and Piggy and those few other boys. Okay, so here's the pig head. Um, it's talking now to Simon. You are a silly little boy, just an ignorant, silly little boy. Um, there isn't anyone to help you, only me, and I'm the beast. Fancy thinking the beast was something you could kill, said the head. You knew, didn't you? It says to Simon. I'm part of you. Close. I'm the reason why it's no go, why things are what they are. So this pig's head represents why people can't get along, why things break up, what it is. And think of what it looks like. It's disgusting. It's a pig's head. The mouth and the blood is black and the flies are buzzing all around it. It represents why humans fight. And it's not something external. It's inside of them. And here's Jack again. We're going to have fun on this island. All right. So the Lord of the Flies. Oh, uh, sorry. That was actually the pig's head, Lord of the Flies. Lord of the Flies sounds a lot like Jack, right? The id. The id is the reason there's discord and fighting. And it's inside of us. It's not aliens on another planet attacking us. It's our tendency to do things like dominance, like rape, whether it's rape and pillage, um, war. But it's all an expression of the id. Now, if you look up the translation of Lore of the Flies, you're going to recognize the name as something you've heard before. I'll tell you next time.